everybody. Hope you're doing well. This is my Mac Life channel. Thanks for tuning in. I've got another good friend of mine. I've met him a couple months ago and gotten to know him over the past uh, few weeks really well. And this is Lou Matson, and we're going to be talking together today and going over some questions. And this really is not necessarily just an interview for beginners, uh, but really anybody. Uh, people who are wanting to get into the sport, uh, folks who are maybe wanting to get better, um, obviously get out to the local track and get more practice and whatever it might be. But to kind of hear about some of these local guys who have been racing for a long time and kind of what their thought process is and sort of what their experience is. And so uh, Lou's been racing for around 33 years. Um, this guy's got over 100 wins and eight championships, okay? across all types of classes of carts. And so it has a plethora of knowledge and we're gonna be tapping in that today. Thank you, Lou, for letting us come in and interview you a little bit. Uh, no problem, pleasure yeah. to do it. Yeah, absolutely, I appreciate his time and thank you guys for tuning in. We're gonna go through some questions here and hopefully you'll find this uh, beneficial and, 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 and make you better, okay? So, all right, Lou, we'll start off. What is your current role in the sport of racing? Uh, my current role in the sport of racing right now is I'm back to being a, a driver and also a team owner for uh, my son and my grandson. So okay. we've got three generations racing right now. Wow. So you're a busy man right now. Pretty busy. Busy man. Okay. This is a fun one here. It says, what percent of the races in your career can you remember? Uh, I would probably say... I would probably say probably about 80% because I've been racing a long time, yeah. obviously. And uh, there are definitely some nights that I'd like to forget. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sure every racer could say that. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I would say about 80%. Okay. Yeah, I can attest to that part. Even uh, I've only been racing for a couple of months, but there's definitely sometimes I'm like, man, I don't want to remember that lap or that race. I would screw that up. Yeah. But you learn from it. So. All right, tell me about the first win you had in any form of motorsports. I just, I mentioned, I mean, over 100 wins, that is a lot. That sounds like a massive number to me. And yeah. so, do you remember the first win you got? I do, and I think it's always your first win that you remember, to be honest with you. And uh, I hope Harry Wheeler never sees this video. Because he, <laughs> it would just bring back the nightmare of losing the pro race okay. on the last lap for him. Wow. And he, he, never let, he, he never let it go, man. He never let me down on it. But Harry was a great guy. And it was him and a guy by the name of Irv Arnold that gave me the ride to run in the 1988 pro race at uh, Tri-State Kirk Club, it was, okay. which is now Pomfret Speedway, which is one of the most competitive tracks in New England, if not the most competitive track. Um, and I was running the, I, I went from stock medium and I won the championship without even winning a race. Oh wow, And I won the, the, I won the pro race in the open division at the end of the year. So um, I just won the points. Yeah, I won the points without, just finished second about every week you know in the stock class okay and then i went into that class and uh i about wore myself out i didn't even know if i was going to make the 50 laps in, in in that open modified division and uh, my arms were about ready to fall off but i knew i had a good cart and i was there and uh i paced myself and i just made the pass on the last lap oh win, man was, it was a win that i would never forget okay yeah. that sounds awesome that sounds like an incredible memory one that you really earned. Yeah, yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. He had a plan. I've been racing, um, well, you've seen it. I've been racing three three classes the past couple of nights, the uh, past couple of races at Mountain Creek. And uh, it's a blast, but it will wear you out. I don't know how you guys do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. But for me as a beginner and getting into it, I'm trying to get as much seat time as possible to get those laps yeah. in. Um, so I've got wrote down here, you know, when you talk about winning, um, you know, the trophies and, and, and payouts too, some of the money and things like that. Winning is what we obviously want to strive to do. Me as a beginner, I, I've got to naturally, hey, look in the mirror, say, listen, hey, I'm a brand new driver this year, getting into the sport for the first time. I'm having to manage my expectations, okay? Which is tough for me personally, because I'm very competitive and I want to win, I want to win now. But I, I really want to be smart to uh, about this. And so what is some of your advice? My question, I guess, what I'm getting to. With that being said, what's some advice for people wanting to get into the sport and they want to win now? What, what do you tell those folks? Uh, I, I tell you, racing is uh, it, it's a very humbling sport, first of all. 
um, and, and to have an expectation of coming in, no matter how you did at any other sport, you could be on top of another sport. Racing is a completely different sport to me than, I mean, I've played, even though I'm short, I've played basketball and I've played baseball and football too, but I mean, racing is just altogether different the way, I mean, you're learning as you go. Mm -hmm. you, you can hardly move your hands. Uh, you need to get to be smooth. Um, I, I, would, I would set the original expectations in getting in as to, uh, you know, just get a lot of seat time. You know, understand that it's going to be a little bit of a, a rocky road and, and find a couple key people uh, that you can rely on their information to get mm -hmm. to where you need to get, you know, yeah. to get a good start. Um, and not, not listen to everybody and try to filter it all out and make some kind of plan by yourself because you will get a lot of different information as you're probably finding out. Sure. But yeah. you need to find those uh, those mentors in the sport and and friend them and uh, and try to make that work for yourself. Yeah, no, that that's great advice, and I can attest to that. Um, you, you know, getting in touch with with Mike and those guys and now Lou and um, Scott and Brandon and Mark and all, and all these these folks and, and, and Jonathan. I mean, if I keep naming names, I know I'll miss somebody. But I got a lot of folks who who are have open. I guess welcome me with open arms and I appreciate that and and I welcome the advice I think one of the tough things as a beginner myself uh, with me not being a wrench head and not you know building transmissions growing up or building engines is trying to learn the, the language of motors and clutches and gears and things like that let alone driving the cart so um, again, I, I'm a clean slate, and I've told you guys on my channel that from the beginning. Um, you, you know, I know that I don't know it all, and so this has been a, a humbling experience, like you said, as well, getting behind the wheel. But it's also been a really neat experience to meet some really, really cool people. And um, I, I, I don't say that loosely. You, you know, a great group of folks, and um, that's the it's a brotherhood type deal. And so I really enjoy that part about it, Lou. You hit the nail on the head there. And I would encourage you guys as well, get out to your local track or find somebody who's gonna kind of take you under their wing and help you out a little bit and be coachable, okay? You don't know it all, so, so start there and be coachable. Um, so what are your favorite types of carts to race? I mean, if you've run over 100 races, I know you've raced all types of different classes. Uh, I would say, as I said in the beginning, the first year I raced in the stock division, mm -hmm. I went a whole year without winning a race and won the championship. So obviously I was very consistent. Um, but it's the, the first time I drove something with high horsepower, I just got the bug. So I mean, my favorite types of carts to race are all the ones. And if you look around my garage, just about every one here, other than my grandsons, mm -hmm. is high horsepower. Oh this yeah. Track. So yeah. Um, it, I would, I would just, classify it as there's a lot of different classes like you know the uh we're running the new 450 stock class uh wing cart with a uh yamaha 450f motor on it that just it's blows my 60 mind. horsepower on a go-kart <laughs> and crazy. the opens are even more um and then uas at 69 horsepower or so on a go-kart it's just extreme horsepower that I don't know. It just, that's the part that does it for me right there. The need for speed. Yes. <laughs> um, what is your favorite local track to race at and why? Uh, I mean, presently, um, and, and you mean presently, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah I presently, I, mean. I, I would say Mountain Creek Speedway. Um, there's, there's a lot of reasons. I mean, one is, uh, you know, my day job, I'm a director of sales operation for a large company. Um, and I don't always have the time to travel like I used to, you know, just kind of keep an eye on things for work. Um, and Mountain Creek Speedway for me is about five minutes from my house, which is, is the first easy thing. You can't beat that. I, I think it takes me longer to load up than it does to get to the track. But I, I would say the real reasons is uh, the, the, the family that runs it, they're uh, family oriented. They put a lot of hard work into the track. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, to me, it's a driver's track. I like a track that's a driver's track, and it's not just, you know, what something. Do you mean, what do you mean by that? What does I, that mean? I think the shape of the track, and I think the surface of the track makes it a driver's track. Like, the D shape 
I call it a D-shaped track. It's like you've got different corners. You may, you're, you're going in one corner, and coming off of that corner, it might be sharper, and you've got to pedal the cart a little okay, bit. So, I see. Okay. Um, and, and, and even if you're running a class set, you're almost wide open. I think as you're going around the track, you probably realize what I'm yeah. saying right now. Yeah, yeah, coming yeah. out of two is a little trickier than going into one. <laughs> if you're a little dicey. Yeah. yeah. So uh, um, that, that is a, a big reason. Uh, I know we're dirt racing. I, I actually didn't grow up a dirt racer. Um, so I've adapted to dirt in the last two years myself. Uh, my son was actually a pretty accomplished dirt racer and he comes down from Connecticut once in a while to race there. So I like the family aspect of it too. Okay. As I said, we've got three generations racing there right now. Um, I've been to other tracks around here. I like racing at GoPro Motorplex. Okay. Um, I'm, I, I'd have to say I'm still struggling with that. There's some there's a lot to learn over there, so okay. I know how you feel about being a beginner yeah, racer. Okay. <laughs> and I'm running the 206 class over there, which is uh, very little horsepower, and it takes a lot of finesse to get around there. And uh, for me, I just need a lot of laps over there still. Uh, but there's some really great drivers over there that makes it really hard to be competitive. But okay. they have paid their dues by, cool. by just practicing and doing laps. So. Yeah, yeah, cool. Sweet, good stuff. Uh, so what's something that you truly enjoy about racing? You kind of you kind of alluded to it, I think, a little bit earlier. Uh, but what's something that you truly enjoy about racing that has nothing to do with winning? I would have to say what I truly love about racing is probably the opposite of what some uh, drivers feel. I love the starts. Gotcha. Uh, I'm not sure if it's because your heart is pounding out of your chest. You don't know what's going to happen, but... It's that first drag race down into the corner of that in all the years I've raced, I could go out there Saturday night and when we're lining up to take that green and we're not sure what's gonna happen, oh, it's man. my favorite part of the race. Yeah, butterflies go. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, it is it's also where it's time to make hay. You know what I mean? You can race. It when when it strings out and you're trying to catch somebody, you can go five laps and you're not getting anywhere, but on restart, you can make a couple spots up. Yeah. So that, that's probably my favorite cool favorite part of the race. I hear you. Yeah, I, um, I actually just posted a video um, yesterday um, about restart that I just butchered. <laughs> trying to get better at that as a beginner. I, it's all about time. Yeah. I'm learning that, but those are fun. I didn't say that to put you on the spot either, yeah. just so you know. No, you're good. That's fine. That, it makes sense. Um, it's all about time and experience, but it also is, one. I would say, definitely one of the funnest parts of the race as well. So what's some advice for a beginner trying to find the right class to race in? For me, I was like, what? where in the world do I start? And luckily, I got hooked up with Adam and then with Mike, and it kind of just funneled into the 206. Uh, I, I feel like I got lucky. Yeah, uh, uh, but but so what do you tell somebody that they want to go to a track, they want to race, but they got all these names and everything. I'm like, where, where do they start? I mean, nowadays, I think the two first choices you can think about: Do you want to run an open cart or a flat cart? People refer to them as, which means everything is open, or do you want to run in something with a cage, like a champ buggy or a uh, a winged outlaw wing cart, cart or something? Yeah. Um, I, so I would first decide if you want to run a flat cart, and I mean, to be honest with you, that would probably segue into the next part, that how much money do you have to spend in racing yeah. too, because obviously uh, racing can definitely be an expensive sport, and you need to pick something that matches your budget. Yeah. Um, so I, I would, I, and, and also when you're talking about, you know, whether it's just flat carts or something with a roll cage, um, the motors, the division you're talking about, uh, as you go up from, say, an affordable class like uh, the new or the newer LO206 class, which is one of the best things that's probably ever happened to kart racing around here in a lot of places, I feel, uh, that's a great platform for an entry level for horsepower, to learn how to drive, to be smooth, and affordability. Gotcha. No, that's great advice. Um, Mike had said the same thing when I interviewed him. He's like, you know, be real with yourself and, and yeah. give yourself a chance, you know, to, to try some things and, and, and not lose your tail, essentially, and to continue to try to have fun and get better and kind of go up in, in baby steps, yes. so, so to speak, and yeah. that'll help point you in the right direction. Um, so the LO206, um, is that also called an animal motor? Are those terms interchangeable? I've heard of them. I've heard of both. And, and on the internet, I had someone comment and they say, you know, those animal motors are really cool. 
so is that the same same deal? Yeah, the uh, LO206 basically is, is a motor that you can virtually take out of the box. And I mean, you can buy one through a motor builder and basically all they do is go through and check the carburetor and make sure the flow, they just set it up basically. It's, it's basically a built motor by Briggs and Stratton that you could take out of the box and do the bolt-ons like exhaust, chain guards, clutch, whatever else, um, and you can go racing. Now an animal motor is a built version of that. It's the uh, same okay. motor, but it can be blueprinted and it can have camshafts in it and you can do blueprinting to it and it makes quite a bit more horsepower than an LO206. Okay, I see, gotcha. So they look the same, but there's a big difference in gotcha. horsepower and, and cost. Okay, perfect, good explanation. Um, so what are some of your, uh, or who are some of your uh, favorite local racers to watch and kind of follow and keep track uh, of? That's a great question. Um, I would have to say some of my favorite racing uh, at, at, at our track, Mountain Creek Speedway, uh, has been you guys. Because, oh yeah. The, because the I, I, I always guys. make time in my night to, to get up to the fence and, and watch uh, some of the guys I know that I've helped some of them out with either helping them set up their cart or helping them yeah. set up their motor or or things like that. So some of my favorite drivers, uh, I'll be honest with you, now that, I, now that I know you, I like to go up and see how yeah. you're doing and progress them. But Scott Gilland, oh. um, Brandon Agee, I mean, um, Chris, uh, I'm trying to think uh, of Chris. Birdsall. Chris Birdsall. He only won his first race. He did yeah. win his first race, which yeah. was great because he just bought a cart off of Jonathan Setzer. And, Man, and they set sense. it up, and man, he was going good, man. He I was, was having a race, but um, he, uh, his, it, your racing is just so close, and I think that's what you're finding out. You found a class that it's affordable, and it's so competitive that if you want to race, that's what it's all about. I yeah. mean, you, it, it could go any way on any given night. Any one of you guys could win. Yeah. As you're getting better, I think you're getting overdue for a win. It's yeah, tough, yeah, know? I can feel it getting closer. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll probably see that some of the advice is going to get dialed back. Yeah. From some of the guys. <laughs> yeah, well, I don't race in that class. You can come see Yeah, yeah, it. that's fine. But no, it's all good, man. I, I love to compete. I've, I've played baseball my whole life and uh, played in college and, and did all that. And, and I just love to compete. And it's been, I guess, 10, 15 years since, since school and, and um, you know, I miss that brotherhood and, and competitive spirit and, and all that. And this is just, I'm telling you, hit the nail on the head, um, especially 2020 in the year everybody's had. Yeah. You, you know, I, for me, it's just come at a perfect time. Yeah, and I'd say, you know, aside of that class, there, I'm, I'm also very intrigued, like, like I told you, I love the horsepower classes. And, you know, when you see families like, uh, uh, Chris C. and his son Evan come to town with their Run With Jabron or UAS carts. Uh, it's a fa great family operation. They're great. Jonathan Setzer, who I travel to different races with, um, I, I would say, you know, Jonathan Setzer is another person that's like me. He loves the horsepower classes. I mean, it, can, he, can he drive in the 206 class and can he run up front? Absolutely. I mean, he's been around dirt race, he's taught me a lot about dirt racing in the last couple of years himself too. But then when you get to GoPro, that's a whole nother clan over there. Okay. That's something that I would definitely suggest you trying. Yeah, to Scott get, was telling to, me um, about that the other day. Yeah. He would say it'd be great to get some good experience. It, it definitely would, and I mean, whether you do the rental league or you go over there with some friends, and uh, I even have a car, I go over there and practice and run occasionally with, but, uh, when I'm over there, I would say the guys over there would be, you know, the number one guy I probably watch over there is Doug Rankin. If he comes to town even on dirt, I think you'll you'll get to know him pretty quick because he'll be running up front. But um, his his strategy and the fact of how many laps he's got over there and how smooth he is, and you'll always see him at the front of the pack at the end of a race because he just knows where to be mm. and 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 when to pick a fight out there or not. Okay, and he's always he's. He's just a survivor out there, and he's there when he needs to be there. But I, I watch him more for the strategy part, and I hope if I am going to continue with road racing, I hope to be there right on his bumper one of these days. Cool. Sounds good. All right. Well, um, tell me a little bit about the hardest thing for beginners to learn in racing. What, what do you think it is? What's the hardest thing for a beginner to learn in racing? <clears throat> uh, that's a good question. Uh, I would say... You need to slow down to go fast. 
Okay. If that makes sense. I wasn't expecting you to say I mean, that. you'll probably hear a lot of veteran drivers tell you that you, if, if, you, if you stand back and you watch races, if you watch a lot of the veterans and uh, the way they drive, they're sitting out there, they are so relaxed in that seat. Okay. And they're letting their body do what it needs to do in a car. And you'll see a lot of new guys that are all hunched up on that steering wheel. And especially on a start, which is what I told you about. Yeah. Um, that they're they're holding themselves up on a steering wheel, and it, it's usually the first time it's not going to go right, you know. Gotcha. So they need to kind of like relax, and you need to almost find a way to get things to slow down because in racing things are happening very fast. You right. Need, you need to learn those instincts, and you need to slow down to go faster. You need to not overdrive corners to go through the corner faster because the corner you need to break that corner down into a lot of pieces because any any track if you were to unfold a corner it's probably longer than the straightaways yeah no that's that's true i yeah. can definitely see that okay good all right so who should i interview next what do you think ah it's a lot of good guys out here a lot of good racers. <laughs> i'm gonna get to everybody i mean i would probably say the guys that i'm watching right now are are veteran racers i would definitely suggest that you should interview uh jonathan setzer um, I would try to get on the phone and interview Doug Rink or Scott Gilman. These guys love to race. It, you know, they, it, they've been racing for years. Uh, I, I've seen Doug and Scott Gilman over there as accomplished the racers as they are running a rental league on a 98 degree Wednesday night over <laughs> at GoPro. They just love to race. In their blood. They, they just they can't stop racing, you know what I mean? So okay. I definitely would consider, consider all of those. Okay, all right, great. Well, the last thing I got is any final thoughts. The floor is yours. Anything you wanted to mention knowing that I was coming in here today? I mean, I think you covered it all. I mean, those are all great questions for anybody coming into racing or or uh, that's been racing right now. And I mean, yes, just be humble. Be yeah. humble, try to make good friends, try to uh, find somebody that you can relate to and that you can understand what they're trying to tell you about getting better and better. and. Uh, and just don't ever give up. You know, if you there's there's really only one reason why you should give up in racing. Uh, if you're just flat out of money. Yeah. <laughs> you can't you can't race if you can't if you can't afford to go. I guess. I got gotcha. you. So, okay. Uh, don't don't give up. Times get tough, and I, I mean there there have been some really good drivers over the years. Like, uh, I mean you may not know this name, but he was probably you know one of the most accomplished modified drivers up in the Northeast, Ted Christopher said, you're going to have a lot more bad nights than you're going to have good nights. So, wow. so hang in there. Yeah. Okay. You know? Great so. advice. Well, thanks again, Lou. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, if you haven't hit subscribe on my channel, take a look at it. See if you like the uh, uh, videos out there and some of the stuff I'm putting out and the content and everything. We've got over 600 subscribers now, all right? So my goal is 1,000, and I'm hoping I can shatter that. And, uh, and so far, we're on a great, on a great roll. Uh, I love seeing the, the kids and, and people come up to my tent while I'm out there. Uh, you're not bothering me one bit. Y'all come up, say hey. Um, I love that camaraderie and, and, and just uh, that atmosphere out there. So uh, if you got any comments or questions for, for Lou, Feel free to comment on there, and I'll make sure I get the questions to them. We'll get them answered for you. And um, appreciate you guys tuning in. Y'all take care. God bless. Have a good day.